Jonathan Silva here with another video taking a look at how we can utilize items from the Power Platform to generally speak just make our lives a little bit easier working with data. Today's video is centered around working with Power BI and connecting into SharePoint to be able to take a, a folder, a list, a document library and automatically get that connection to bring to our Power BI reports in order to visualize that data after we set up our full data model. So we're gonna jump into Power BI and take a look at how we can connect into SharePoint directly there. So what you can see is I've opened up my get data option there in Power BI, we've gone down to more, and I've just gone in and done a filter search there for SharePoint. And what we're gonna to cover today in this video is how to connect into a SharePoint folder and an online list, and how we can utilize SharePoint to always store our data in the cloud and then connect directly into Power BI. So as we work with SharePoint here, we're gonna start off working on the folder example. So I'll go ahead and choose folder here from our options here, and then select connect. Now when working with SharePoint specifically online, you'll notice that it is asking us here in Power BI for a site URL. The site URL that we wanna put in here is directly taken from SharePoint itself. So we're gonna go navigate over to my SharePoint site and I'll show you exactly how to get that site URL. Now, what you would imagine here, this is a folder that I have, a document library built in SharePoint that I'm gonna use, that I can just come into the URL there and then simply just copy and then paste it into Power BI. And once I do that, you'll see that if I just hit okay, I'm actually getting a little bit of a a warning there that the URL isn't valid. It's asking me to enter in the site root URL only, which means we need to get rid of everything inside of our URL that is additionally pointing to the folder or the list itself. Now there's a couple ways to do this. You could have just copied and just remove some information there from um, my URL that I pasted in, in Power BI, or I can come back here into my SharePoint site, go to the home page here for our, our SharePoint. I'm gonna minimize this and select home, open that up on another tab. And now that I'm on the home page here, you'll see for this specific site, that is the URL that I want to take. Okay, the entire URL there ending in the name of the site. Now, if you're going from the folder itself or from the list itself, it's pretty much the same process to get to the same point. All you'll need to do is take your URL and end it right at the name of the site. So it's just like that. Every single list, every single folder we have in SharePoint is designated in the exact same way like this. So we just wanna to point to the site name itself there. And I'll go ahead and copy that. And now if we go to Power BI, we can paste that here into our site URL location. So now you can see that I have my site URL added in, no warning, nothing wrong with that. And then I can choose okay. And once you choose OK, we're now going to get this um, credential pop up here. If it's the first time specifically that you've logged in or connected to SharePoint on your machine here. So you'll need to go in and not choose anonymous, but make sure you're going to your Microsoft account. OK, and then choose to sign in with your Microsoft uh, credentials. So I'm going to go ahead and do that myself. I'm going to point to my own here and we'll go through the process. I'm going to go ahead and add in my password. may ask for your authentication as well. And there we go. And now I can hit connect and we can log into SharePoint again. That's all based on our single sign on. We're just using the same information. So now what I have here working with my SharePoint site, you can see I have all of the different documents that are stored in that library for SharePoint. So you can see here, I have a few that are in Excel format, I have a CSV and a text document. And what you're also seeing here inside of this preview is some extension, the date access, modified, created, and the folder path in which you can find that within your site. So if you have multiple different document libraries or folders, you'll see all of them listed here. 
What we next want to do is come into our area down at the bottom here and choose how do we want to work with this data. Do we want to combine all of them right now, right away here in Power BI and either combine in transform data to go to Power Query or combine in load? Usually we'll do that if we know that all of the documents are identical or nice and neatly put together. We don't have to filter or add any extra pieces. But if you do have to do any filtering, you do have to work with um, you know, shaping or transforming of those queries, you're gonna to wanna to come and select transform data. Okay, so right here, we are gonna choose transform data. What this will do is open up Power Query so we can go ahead and work with the data that we have. So I'm gonna select that myself, open up another window here for Power Query, and now we can see, again, all of the different files that I have brought in we have the same information we saw from our preview, but now we can actually work with it here in Power Query. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this. We'll call this our SharePoint folder example. Okay, so I'm just gonna rename it first. And then what we can do is decide how we wanna filter this down. Do we wanna filter by the path, maybe choosing only from one specific uh, folder or document library we have in SharePoint. All of mine are in the same, but you could filter that down here. And you could filter down from a text filter where the path does not contain a specific name, so you're only focusing on the which one, um, you know, f filtering out, or you could choose that the document path only contains the name of the folder that you wanna work with. What we could also do is come over here to our extension and we can filter down by extension as well. By selecting our filter dropdown here in the right hand corner of the column, we can choose to only keep specific file types. So say I only want to keep my Excel file type so I can remove text and CSV from our column here. And then I'm going to filter down to only these four items. And if I want from this point on to have all of those documents all put together on one single table, that's what I can do right here. And the easy way to do that is we're gonna work right on our content column. And in the upper right hand corner, we have our combine files option right here. And by choosing combine files, we'll be able to take all four of these different Excel files, and combine them into one. And the great thing about this is as we do this into the future is because we are working in Power Query and we have our applied steps, every single time we now get a new file, the same structure, format, whatever we have into that folder, it's gonna follow the same steps here. So all of our text and CSV files will be filtered out first. Then we can come in and combine the Excel files that are remaining. And once we select our combined files, we can then choose how we want them to finally appear. All right, now that we have our preview window here for when we wanna combine the files, what I'm gonna do is select sheet number one. Just choosing this first option here, you will notice that we may have some extra nulls that are returned, which we can filter out. If you wanna choose this, the table that may have been already created, you can bring that in as well. But I'm just gonna simply choose the sheet alone. Okay, just this one here. Um, you can choose also to skip files with errors if you would like. Okay, so I'll go ahead and choose our sheet number one and select OK. You'll notice that you can see all four here, by the way. We're just seeing the sample, which is the first file um, returned here within our preview. So I'll just choose that. And we're gonna bring that here into our Power Query. Now working with Power Query, we can see sheet number one as a kind of like a sample that we have brought in all by itself, which we're not necessarily gonna be using here. What we are gonna be choosing to use is this SharePoint file example, or excuse me, SharePoint folder example. So I can always get rid of this sheet number one if I want to, it's just giving me the very first one um, that we have selected. So I'll go ahead and delete that for right now. And I'm gonna choose the SharePoint folder example because that has all of my data combined here all together at once. And you will notice that in this case, I do have some extra nulls that were returned for each of these Excel files when put together. It looks like it just stored some metadata there in the end, um, at the end of the tables that were created. So if I wanna get rid of these nulls, there's a couple ways to do that. I can simply come in and filter out nulls on one of the columns and do that right away here. Or what we can do is set ourselves up for success into the future. 
And what we could do is do all of that work on the transform sample file. By doing it here on the transform sample file, that's gonna say that every time we get a new file coming in through Power Query, through our combined files or step here, it's gonna do all the work on the transform sample file first and then apply it to every other file here. So if I do it in, on the sample file in the future, every new file that may have nulls will automatically have those nulls removed before we have the full combination. So I'm gonna come here on transform sample and you can choose on any of these columns here because they all have nulls there. I'm just gonna remove the nulls just like that. And now that I've removed the nulls, on my sample, if I come back to my folder example, you will notice that all of the nulls are automatically removed as well. And now into the future, if I were to add in a new Excel file here, any null that might be in that Excel file that I filtered down to will also be removed prior to bringing it all on the single table that we have combined down to. Okay, so that's how we can use SharePoint folder or document library to be able to bring in data into Power BI. The next example that I wanna showcase is how to utilize a SharePoint list. So if you come back to SharePoint, I do have a list that I'm gonna use here. And this one is just a different list that I work with. Um, in this case, it has some top US universities. Okay, just listed by the, the name or the title and the state abbreviation. That's, that's all we're looking at here. We like to do is reference that in Power BI, bring it into Power Query to use later on down the road. And what we're going to do is utilize the exact same site URL that we did with our folder. So make sure that you do have that copied. So I'm gonna do that myself here as well have that copied ready to go because that's what you're gonna to point to when we connect into SharePoint in Power BI. So I'm gonna come back here and I'm just gonna do everything within Power Query this time. So to get to SharePoint, I'm gonna to go to New Source, to More, and we can either search to SharePoint or come into our online services and you can see it's the very top one, a SharePoint online list. And that's the one I wanna select, I'm gonna hit Connect and now I can put in again my site URL. It's asking for the entire SharePoint site, not the specific list URL, not the specific folder URL, the general site. And then once you choose OK here, what you will notice is we are going to get access to every single list that has been created here in SharePoint, even the ones that are outside of what we generally made ourselves. We have all these extra ones that have been automatically generated. Okay, you can even see you have your document library there as well. So what I'm gonna choose is the single list that I want. If I wanted to bring in multiple lists, you can multi-select. Okay, just choosing a few if you want to, like my superhero one that I just did before with my library. You can see all it's showing is just the contents there. Okay, but I'm gonna choose only the one list. That's the one I want, and I'm gonna hit okay. And now once we bring in this SharePoint list, and I'll go ahead and just rename this our SharePoint list example. What you'll notice is we are now getting a lot of extra, uh, excuse me, columns that are returned from SharePoint. These are columns that are automatically generated by SharePoint when we have our list, these are stored in the back end of SharePoint, some metadata items here, some different storage options from SharePoint. And if we don't want any of these, all we need to do is remove the extra columns that we have. Easiest way to remove large volume of columns here, I have 32 columns on this table now. Um, easiest way to remove a lot of them at once instead of multi-selecting, holding down the control key, okay, is by selecting choose columns. And I can go to choose columns. And then from there, I can just simply choose the columns I want. In this case, I want title and I want state. And then I can hit okay. And now you'll see that I have now my title and state column. I can now choose the data types for them. They're both text data types and I am all done. We have now been able to connect into SharePoint in two different ways from a folder and a list 
bring them into Power Query here inside of Power BI. So we're now able to expand upon that within our data model and our general report. If we had these two tables that were working together, coming from SharePoint, we can then create some relationships inside of our model um, for Power BI and start building out our visuals right away, just as we would with any other way working with Power BI. Well, thank you so much for joining me here with our video today, How uh, taking a look at how we can connect into SharePoint online inside of Power BI to utilize data stored there in the cloud. Stay tuned for some more videos coming up as we continue to explore Power BI and all the other features available within it.